everyone, welcome to Bridges Universe of Tie-Dye Magic here in Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, it is a very cold, wet, windy day here today. We're only expecting 14 here today. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm praying it doesn't rain because I'm in the shed. If it rains, all you're going to hear is the rain on the roof and probably not me. So let's hope we can get through this video today without losing sound. Um, today what I thought I'd come on and show everybody is uh, my spiral towels. Uh, so I do hotel quality towel sets. Uh, you'll get two bath towels, a hand towel and a face washer. Um, and each set sells for $80 plus your postage and handling. Um, each time I do spiral towels, I always try to keep the sets together. Uh, it just helps with orders and colours and that type of thing. Uh, I tend to, if I have like five sets of towels on the table to do at once, I tend to get lost in what orders what, so I just tend to do one at a time. So that's just my little thing about doing orders. So, the towel set itself has been soaked in soda ash for 30 minutes. It was spun out in the washing machine. Um, so it's just sort of touch, yeah, touch dry. Um, my washing machine spins out fairly well, so uh, they, they do tend to come out fairly dry once they've been spun. Uh, look, a lot of people do this different ways. A lot of people will tell you spray soda ash on it. A lot of people soda ash once tied, but uh, you've all seen my soda ash process in previous videos where I just soak everything for 30 minutes, rinse it out, or not rinse it, sorry, spin it out in the washing machine, and then it's ready to tie. So the first step uh, in spirals for me is I'll show you some tools. So you're going to need a marker. Make sure it's obviously a washable marker. I use Crayola. Um, I just find them the best and I've never had an issue with them staying on the material, which is really good. Now, a lot of people use different things for spirals. Uh, some people just use the good old wooden spoon. Other people use the hemostats with the covered ends so that you don't ruin your actual material. Um, I prefer the hemostats, um, but you can, it does take a little while to get used to them. I must admit, it did take me a while of practicing on how tight to squeeze them, um, what to use actually around the teeth to stop it from biting into your material. Um, but other than that, that's, that's my set of hemostats that I, I use this set for everything. So, first step in a spiral for a towel set for me is to fold your piece into quarters. So I'll start that again hopefully so you can see. So we have our basic face washer. So the way I go is just fold it into quarters, halves, halves again, get your marker, hold your corner and just put a dot at the end there so now you know where the centre of your project is. Okay. So from there, it's simply a matter of folding it out. Now, a lot of people talk about where do you do the die? Do you do the die on top? Do you do the die on the underneath? When I do towels, it depends on the design for me. If I'm going to do black detail, then I'll actually need the top of the piece to be the bottom because that's where the black die is actually going to get put before we put it into the container. But this is just going to be a two color spiral. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the die is actually going to go on the top of the piece. So when I actually fold it, that's where you've got to stop and think, right, so if I spiral it, this top part is actually going to get flipped over because it's actually the bottom of the piece where you're going to see the beautiful spiral. So for these, I flip them over to the tag side and I then find my little dot in the centre, hemostats. 
Now, you only really, really need a little bit of material in these. They hold really well. And another tip is don't squeeze them too tight. If you squeeze them too tight, you're actually going to rip your material and get a hole in it from trying, from the hemostats to try and twist so much, it sort of tends to pull the material and that can happen. So all I do is just pinch a tiny little bit in the center, put my hemostat on it, and I only usually do a two click. This is really thick, so it's not gonna take much to hold it. Then I start my spiral. Now, I think the other thing to sort of be mindful of when you're doing a spiral is to always turn the same way. Sometimes I'm doing 50 jobs at once and I'll accidentally start twisting to the right, but then I'll forget and I'll accidentally twist one to the left. All that means is that your spiral actually ends up the reverse way. Um, some people actually like that, some people don't, it just depends. So today, we're going to spiral to the right. We're just slowly going to turn the hemostats and hopefully you can see that that in the center is starting to spin. Now what I like to do is just keep straightening everything out, pulling out from the edges and making everything sit flat. So once I do the third turn of the hemostat, especially with a face washer, you can see the face washer is gonna to wanna to start to spin. So once I do the third turn, I now place my hand flat on the piece and I start to manipulate the spiral to be flat. So once I've got that to how I like it, I come up again, have a look, and I do another turn. With a flannel, you're sort of going to have to manipulate the, the folds because they'll curl up on you and try and fold into each other. So I just slowly keep manipulating while holding my hemostats down. I just slowly keep manipulating that flannel, or oh, sorry, face washer, wherever you are in the world. Face washer, here in, here in Oz we call them flannels. Um, and just keep going around. So then one more turn, and you can see the whole thing wants to spin, right? That's where you know you need to stop, completely with your hemostats. So then again, it's just a matter of manipulating those folds. Once I get to there, I then place flat on my piece to hold it, and I just do exactly the same thing by just pulling the edges of the piece around, keep going around and around until you get a nice tight circle. Now I know that's gonna be hard, a little bit hard to see because it's a flannel. So once I get to that stage, I actually like to just hold it there. Then I get my rubber bands. I prefer rubber bands uh, in spirals. I, I tend to find that twine sometimes uh, will pull too tight and it'll actually change the shape of your spiral. So I just like my spiral to sit fairly loose and then I just try and find the right size rubber band that will actually fit the piece without actually changing the shape. So once I get, now you can see I've still got my hemostats in here. Gonna need another rubber band to secure. I usually do two rubber bands. Right, to secure it like that, right? So you can see, there we go like that, right? So now I take the hemostats out. So it's just a matter of unclipping them. I like to give them a bit of a, little bit of a spread. And then you'll find that they'll just come straight out. So from here now, I just play around with the rubber bands just to make sure that everything is tucked in properly. Right. So again, you can see now, I'll pull the tag out. Normally I wouldn't, but I will just for this video so you can see what I'm doing. So that's, that's the tag side, right? That's the side that's actually what, what I call the rough side. And then you can see that's your spiral side, right? So when you place it in your container, you're actually going to place it this way, 
right? Rough tag side down, like that. All right, so that is the first spiral for the day. Now you can see I probably do need one more rubber band on that, just to hold that other side in. Just to make sure we're all nice and round. You're looking for round. So there we go. That's the flannel. Face washer. Wherever you are in the world, they all call it different. So there you go. So that's that one. Right, we'll put that aside. And now we will start a hand towel. So hand towel is the same. We fold it in half. So half, spin it around, half again, marker, washable marker, grab your folded corner, nice big dot. Okay, unfold her. They're all nice and flat. Again, tag side up. Same principle. With doing a spiral on something that's skinny, what you're going to find is your these parts in here are going to come in really quickly, and these parts out here take a little bit more to play around with. These I find you just need to manipulate with your hands as you're going around with the spiral to make sure that you get nice circular patterns. So again, just picking up that little bit in the middle, you're only gonna need two, two grabs. And again, first turn, if it looks good. All right, so in my first turn, I can already see my sides here are bunching. So I wanna actually spread them out and I wanna pull them so that they sit a bit flat. See how that's now sitting a bit more flat? Same with this one. I wanna pull this one around and I want the folds to really be going out this way. So now we do another turn. And again, we can see it wants to bunch up here. So we start to pull. We start to get that nice flat spiral rather than it bunching up and giving you creases within your spiral. So again, so that's the third turn. So now you can see that piece actually wants to spin on itself. So now I come back and I open it a little bit and I start to manipulate those folds to where I want them to be by pulling and actually creating the fold. So right, once I'm to there, again, it's back to hand pressure to keep it flat. You can tell, you can see my hemostat wants to turn back that way. Just give it a bit of a, a tighten and put it in between your fingers and it, it should hold. Right, so I've got a bit of bunching here that I want to straighten out. So I come in and grab the fold and I pull it to where I want the fold to be. So you can see that one's trying to bunch on me, so push it down flat on the table and then push it in. So as you're coming around, you will see the natural fold and the natural spin. All right, let's see if we can show you. So this one here, he's trying to bunch over all the rest. So just bring it back out. Don't be scared to unspiral your spiral. See, he was tucked up in there. We didn't quite get him straight. All right, so now just bring him back around again. And this time we can see he's sitting nice and in line with the other folds. Okay, so same thing, just keep pulling them around, pulling them around, twisting, twisting and keeping your hemostats nice and tight. Now once you get to the other side again, don't be afraid to unravel it and start wrapping to get your lines nice and straight. The better you can get your folds to be flat and sitting in a nice spiral, the better it's the end product will look. So same, we just keep going around and around. So right, that was the other side. So now 
we can pull this side right up to here and we can start getting everything nice and tight. So we've already got that section done. You can see we're all nice flat lines. So again, hemostats are still in. And on one end, holding your hemostats and now start your other spiral. This one should come around fairly easily. As you bring this around, it should stay flat and you'll be able to tighten the last section of the other end. So again, it does help to have bigger hands when you're doing these, but it's all good. So pull him around, nice and tight, nice and tight, all sitting together. Hold on to him and then we'll try, see what size rubber band this one's gonna like today. Get that little tuck in, whoops, he came out. Hang in there, whoops, rubber band slips. This can happen, don't panic. <laughs> Just go back, <coughs> bring it around. Doesn't help when you've got little hands. Sometimes it's just a bit tangly to hold on to everything. Okay, let's try and get that sucker on again. Down there. Doesn't want to go on today. Come around your first one on to secure. Alright, oh, let's try. Now we want to secure the other edge so that we've got the two rubber bands holding on. Whoops, does not want to go down there today. Okay, so you've got everything secure. Now you can take your, again, give it a little bit of a and then up and out she comes. And now just start to play around with your bands, making sure that everything is pulled around tight. Like I said, just keep playing with it. You'll find as you're doing your rubber bands, you might, <coughs> sorry, um, you just might need to tighten stuff. Then we put our extras on sure we're nice and tight. Again, I've just got a bit wants to <coughs> not be nice today. There he goes. Just to that section there. And there we go. So again, rough, rough, spiraled end. Okay. going to manipulate those rubber bands to give me my center piece because I like my rubber bands to go over the center part of the spiral okay so there we go we can see that's where the die placement is going to be so that's a hand towel okay now for a bath towel so I've already folded the towel in half, then into quarters, then our marker. I tend to try and make this dot a little bit bigger. Sometimes it can be hard to find it on the other side. So then, like all the others, tag side up, find your centre. Here, just move these rubber bands out of the way. This time we're going to need our big rubber bands. Okay. So same thing. I with towels because they obviously have the shorter and wider. Try and get everything a bit flat, as flat as you can. Makes it a bit easier. And away we go again. 
pinching where you put your mark. Again, just a couple. Sometimes with a towel, I just sort of feel it. If it feels, if, when you, and that doesn't fall out, then you, you're pretty good. Sometimes the bigger towels, I will do an extra clip, just because sometimes when I turn them, it will come out. All right, so again, with bigger towels, I tend to do three quick turns. Get it into where I need it to sit. And then again, I just start manipulating the outsides, pulling everything out so that it sits flat. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, don't turn with the hemostats. Uh, look, if you haven't clipped it too tight and you're turning with your hemostats, you should be okay. Uh, I wouldn't do it with fine fabrics, but towels I don't tend to have an issue with. I usually get to where I can feel it's like struggling and then I'll stop. You'll actually feel it when you're turning where the hemostat wants to start going back on you. That's normally a good sign to tell you don't turn that anymore because you could be damaging the material on the inside. So now I tend to just use my hand and I just keep spinning and pulling everything out, making sure that nothing's overlapping and that everything is straight. And I just keep going until we get that nice. See some of them with thick towels, they will want to double up on you. Just keep going, pulling out and refolding. You'll see the creases that want to double, just put another crease into them and then they will fold nicely for you. So you can see we've got that section. Sorry, I'm a bit off the, we've got that nice flat, right? So from here, I then change hands so that I can get the other section. What I want to do is I can see one that's going to try and sit up on me. So I'm going to put an extra line and an extra fold in there. And then that way, he will start to sit flat. There's another little one poking his head up there. We just need to crease him. Keep turning. See, there's one there, you can probably see it there, right? So all I do is I open that up, I push my thumb down in, give it another fold, come back, set that fold back down where it should be, and then I can just keep spinning. So you can see, at this stage, your hemostat in your large towels should stand up pretty well by itself if you've pulled everything tight enough. So now I'm just going to keep coming around. Towels will normally hold themselves. It's just a matter of practice. Just practice. Okay. Let's get this one coming around. Round, round. Just want to make sure they stay flat. That's the other thing. Okay. Keep turning him. Keep turning him. Turning him. There's a double fold we need to do. See, there's one there. He's going to come up naturally that way. So he sits nice and flat. And then that piece comes around. And you can normally, that'll be it. It's now your rubber bands. Like I said, some people use twine. I tend not to like to use twine. Extra large rubber bands. And then I try, the hardest part with a rubber band is that bit like you just saw. Just trying to get that first, first little bit of rubber band on is the hardest bit. Once you've got it, secure him in. And now you can tighten. Your first rubber band, right. Now we go crossways to try and tighten these two pieces. We hold on to him and in we go. Right, so we can see we've still got our corners that we need to put extra bands on because it's such a large piece. You can now take your hemostat out of this. Again, give it a bit of a squeeze that way, a bit of a jiggle and out she comes. Okay. So let's tidy up these ends and 
we'll flip her over and show you what she looks like underneath. Okay, so I don't like to play with these too much because they can tend to, I can see a bit there that just needs a little bit of, once you put your rubber bands on, you will be able to tell where it's not pulled tight enough and where you just need to slide a little bit more around. I could feel that one wasn't quite where it needed to be. You can see then as I go around, you get like a, a for the want of a better word, a lump in it. <laughs> okay, that looks better. That sits better. So rough. Spiraled. Right, this is the side that the die is going to go on. So that is how I do spirals in my towel sets. I have another towel to go. I'm not going to bore you and sit you, make you sit through another one. Um, but the next step in this will be containers, dye, and ice. Um, and I will try and video that for you today. Um, and then we can do a washout in about, if we get the dye on today, we're looking at probably Friday or Saturday for these to be washed out. I'll normally leave them for two to three days. Because it's so cold, we could be three days for the ice. So we'll see how we go. Uh, for those of you that are following the Chakra Circle blanket, I'm just doing some fine details on that blanket today. It's been washed out um, and it's ready to go, but I'm putting some extra fine details into that piece today. So I should be able to reveal that to you either later today or maybe tomorrow or Friday. It's just going to depend how many orders come through um, in that time. So please give the video a like, share, subscribe, and you can see all the videos on all the tutorials that I'll start doing for everybody. Um, and again, go on to Bridgie's Universe of Tie Dye Magic on Facebook, and you can see all the products that I make. They're all for sale. And please give that page a like and a share as well. I hope you all have a great day, everybody. Like I said, it's raining and really nasty day here, so I hope the sun is shining where you are. And I'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone.